<laughs> right. Okay. Ladies, wonderful to have you. Um, let's give, let's give a one minute, uh, one minute who you are, Sydney, you want to start? Sure. Um, hi everyone. I'm, my name is Sydney Pizand and I lead the digital practice at LaForce full scale, like PR communications influencers, is a big part of like what we do, just how I am so spoiled to work with the four family, as I call them, um, all the time. But, um, you know, why I'm here today is really because like, you know, my portfolio really is like 15 plus like wine and spirits friends and a big way that we interact with our audiences and, and engage with influencers is through, you know, events and, and tailored experiences. So it's a really interesting time for us kind of like thinking about where we've been and, and how we recalibrate and, and maybe show up a little differently. Fantastic. And Alex? Hi, I'm Alex. I'm the CMO of The Daily, which we always just say I'm the glorified cruise director of the magazine. Um, that means that I work with our partners and our fashion designers and our you know loyal audience of influencers and models and the rest um, to create programming for the partners and just to bring people together so that we then have content for the magazine and the website in addition to just breaking editorial news. So I obviously had an interesting last summer recalibrating. Um, <laughs> having a much quieter summer than I usually did. Yep. Um, but I'm really excited to be back in action. Um, I think we've just seen tremendous progress. At least I personally have in what I do. I've seen tremendous progress and positive indicators for what's coming for the season. So I, I've, I have what I'm deeming COVID whiplash where I went <laughs> to 60 in about a month, um, but that's the, the best whiplash I could ever ask to have. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, I think this is like, I'm so excited to talk to both of y'all because, um, yeah, I think so much of, of what y'all do has been event-based. Um, and again, I think that we were just kind of like pre-COVID, it was just like the more events, the better, like, you know, I mean, I remember even as a, as just having like my clients run them, you know, sometimes you'd be at three events a night and you're bouncing around. It's the same people. You're just like, oh, you going over to the to Fendi after this, or are you going to this one? Are you going to that one? Which is fun, but but like, again, I think something we want to talk about is like, is that, are we going back to that? And I think that Alex, you just completed the first big influencer activation, in-person travel that I have seen yet. And and maybe just give us um, a bit on, on what that was um, and, and what y'all were kind of worried about going in, how you prepared for it, and what the reaction was. That's a big question, but I know you can, you can. It is a big question. And it was definitely something I think I didn't even realize the scale of what we had done in terms of what it meant for the industry until we were out of it and out of a successful event. So for everybody to, to quickly know, we planned an influencer and model um, golf slash fling at the incredible resort in Pennsylvania called Nemecolin. It's where the last season of The Bachelor was filmed. A lot of people may know it from that, but it's also this very high-end luxury resort that offers everything. And this is a real testament to the timeline of what's happened and how important the planning stages of things that you mentioned. So we've been planning this since the end of 2020. And very much from the beginning, it was an asterisk of, we'll do this as soon as people feel safe. But what does it look like so that when people do feel safe, we're ready to run? And I'm glad we did that because the pre-planning allowed for us to activate really quickly when we started to see positive trends in it. Originally, the event was planned to be in June. And when we saw things start to pick up and also with some things that were happening at the resort, because it's the most popular place on the planet now, we ended up moving it to May. And I remember there was like a very long strategy call about what does that look like? Because when we moved it to May, there was a little discomfort on my side of where will we be with vaccines? Where will we be with testing? How will people feel? Um, and what we did to address that was we were very upfront with everybody that we invited. And we said, this is what the trip is. This is what we will expect. And these are the level of safety precautions that we will have for everyone coming. And with that and being really clear about things, I think that sets a self-selection process for influencers that are or are not comfortable. And so I think a lot of it is having that open dialogue and relationship to put the ball in their court to make a decision on if this is right for them and their audience. And we have a long list, you know, we're lucky. We had a long list of people that we could invite. Um, I will say that I didn't have anybody say no um, except for people that were traveling or booked on other jobs. So I think that was a testament to the fact that people really are desiring to go out. 
Um, and then it was staying in constant contact and letting them know what to expect. Um, it was, do you want, or do you feel comfortable flying or would you rather we drive you in a private car? It was giving visibility on the entire guest list, which isn't the thing I normally do. Normally I'm like, well, you'll see as you get there. Have fun. Like, I don't need to plan a party for you. Um, but in this case, we really said, these are the guests that will be there. So then somebody could look and say, do I feel comfortable with this person? Or like, how do I fit into the whole thing? Um, and then it was a matter of us creating different experiences that felt there were different levels of exposure to other guests and safety. So everything that we did, we did a small group focus. So like, you know, to your point about going to the spa, we didn't send a hundred people into the spa. We said, would you like a spa treatment? If mm -hmm. you don't, we can also offer you an individual Jeep tour off-roading if that makes you feel more safe. Like it's about presenting options and letting people decide what they're comfortable with and go into it. And because of that, we actually ended up with like just a very well-rounded selection of activities and different kinds of content that came out of it. So I think that there was something that I've learned of don't just force a schedule on people. Mm -hmm. You're going to, and we got more in terms of deliverables than we ever expected as a brand because I actually didn't say, I want two posts a day. I want three stories. You need to tag this. I said, come do what you feel safe with, have a great time and share it with your audience as we know or as you know, mm -hmm. they'll respond to. And we got an overwhelming amount of deliverables that were perfect. And I, I will say we're so lucky, knock on wood, the COVID cops haven't come for us. We, we haven't had those questions of like, well, why are you doing this? You know, the, the people that are sitting there kind of looking to throw stones, like it really was just a very nice celebration. And I give major credit to Nema Collin for their levels of safety and what they put forth. So as a brand or as a hotel that may be partnering with a brand or planning something, just make it clear. There were signs all over the resort that said, please wear a mask. Now, we had an interesting thing that happened when we were there is actually when the CDC lifted the need to wear masks indoors. And so we had to sort of have an, you know, an inner conversation quickly of what do we do? And the hotel, they're incredible, came to me immediately and said, what will make your guests comfortable? Do you need everybody in masks or not? And you know, having an open dialogue and being ready to adjust and having a plan A and a plan B and a plan C is so important. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll share what we ultimately decided is, I wanted our guests to be comfortable and to express themselves to the level of their comfort. So if people don't have to wear masks and our guests didn't wanna wear masks, I want them to do that. That's up to them on how they're gonna share it. But what we decided was that we would all feel more comfortable if the hotel staff remained in masks and that there was that level of showing a comfort because I'm sure we're all dealing with this. There's a level of judgment. Are you mm -hmm. wearing a mask? Why are you vaccinated? Like there's this honor system and there's this sort of like, you know, it's like the second layer of the COVID police of, well, why aren't you wearing it? So I wanted it to be something that everybody felt comfortable to their own level of what they were going to do in terms of masking up or not. And yeah. it was great. That's fantastic. And it's just so nice to hear. It was so nice to see travel content again. It was so nice to see a lot of my friends from the industry in the same place again um, and and see that go off with, you know, and, and be really well received. And I think it, it will be a confidence booster for the entire industry to say, okay, they did it and they did it like pretty big. So it's, yeah. it's allowed, we're allowed to do it. Now, Sydney, you know, you have been involved in, you know, what I call the, you know, influencer, um, you know, the Influencer Super Bowl. Uh, it, is, it is the kind of premier event every year, the Polo Classic. Um, and it is uh, obviously a lot harder to regulate like a, a group right. trip where you have a certain amount of people going and, and you, you can, you know, it's a, it's a big gift. I mean, how many people were at New York last year or um, two years ago? Like 7,000 ticketed. 7,000 tickets, yeah. Um, and uh, so you take 7,000 people, you, uh, you fill them with champagne uh, and put them in the 90 degree heat. Um, you, you know, you get, you get things happen. Um, but that event um, is, again, obviously uh, enormous and it's a, a huge moment for, for Vav. Um, mm -hmm. And would love to just hear, uh, you know, about, as much as you can share, how y'all outside of love even are, are starting to think about these events, um, ones that are a little less, you know, where you where you can't control as much what's happening inside of that 
inside those walls. Yeah, no, completely. I mean, um, mindfulness is a word I find myself using a lot because hesitation sounds bad. Um, you know, but we have just much more of a mindfulness about like how we're planning, like these types of, of experiences, right? Like whether they're like large scale, like giant influencer Super Bowls, like the Buff Bowl Classic, or even just like intimate, I mean, like cycling events, like, you know, we had one of those last night and, and we're dipping our, our toe in the water and really figuring it out. But I think there's a certain degree of like necessity, um, that like events and experiences like provide for us as sort of like brand marketers, especially when you're in kind of like wines and spirits. Like I always kind of try to, I think about like what makes us so different from like fashion beauty, like fashion beauty, like, you know, you really can kind of like get that intimate, like one-to-one, -one, like almost like dialogue, if you will, like with an influencer recipient by like sending them like a really beautiful mailer, like make it your own style it your own way. Like that's how you sort of like build affinity for like your brand. But when you're in wines and spirits, there's, there's a lot of like kind of the way that we kind of like give back to our consumers, our brand friends and family is really by like bringing them into like our world. And we, we have to like very much like we have to create that, you know, whether it's like an intimate tasting or like a trip to like a really amazing property in Hawaii um, or like a giant event like the Buff Club Couple of Classic. And, um, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of conversation about like events need to come back, but like in what way, mm -hmm. right? So do we, do we bring back what was because there's so much nostalgia for it? Or do we turn the world on its head and, and try to make it a little different? But at the end of the day, we like, we kind of like feel as though we, we have to bring these back. There's so much excitement about it too, mm -hmm. you know? And, and we do like the Vev Clicopolo Classic, but I have brands that like their whole platform is like music festivals, you know? Like we thrive off people and the energy of people. And, um, you know, I think we just kind of like feel like that it needs to happen. And, and again, like in the right way, you know, there's a lot of questions being asked, like what, what can we request or what kind of disclosures can we get from attendees? You know, like we have actually a, um, a gala, um, you know, right after Memorial Day. And um, essentially we either have, we've kindly asked to show either like, like a vaccination card or, or a negative COVID test, like, like prior to joining. And those kinds of things are, are, are really different and interesting for us. Um, but, you know, these are the types of conversations that, that are happening. And, and again, kind of like what Alex was saying, it's like, what is the comfortability of like our guests and attendees? You know, mm -hmm. like we, we spend so much of our careers, like building relationships with, with our audiences and our, our, our people rather. It's kind of like, now's the time to have that like really two-way dialogue you know, mm -hmm. between them and like really adapt and build out our programs to kind of like lend itself to, to what people are expecting of us or, or want from us as brands. Yeah, uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I want to talk to y'all both uh, about like context and the environment that we're in, right? Um, and, and Sydney, I'll start with you, you know, it, it's obviously, you know, I know you do a lot of champagne um, across the board, outside of love uh, as well. Um, it's, it's such a celebratory thing, right? It, that it's so tied to, to celebrating. And it, it's, I think a lot of the, the marketing events and, and content that you've done is really like joyful um, in a way that's like always fun and refreshing. Uh, and the, you know, last year wasn't, hugely joyful uh, for a lot of people. There wasn't a lot to celebrate. Um, how are you, how are you thinking about like, how did those brands, especially the champagne brands, how do they navigate that reality? And how do you think about this, this new world we're in and, you know, how much opulence is enough and, and how much is maybe tone deaf, you know, is that a conversation that's happening? Um, completely. And, you know, I think something like, so especially some of my brands that have higher price points, for instance, like we do consider ourselves like luxury brands. And, you know, I think that the persona that we had really adopted that played super well for, my, for us, you know, like before the pandemic was really sort of like, we are the ringleader, like we lead by example, like we're doing what the cool kids do. And like, providing you with sort of like fodder to like maybe like recreate those experiences like maybe whether it's at home or outside or abroad like in your own way you know um 
so what we kind of like when when the pandemic hit there was this sort of sense of like all right let's pause you know like we need to be okay with like champagne with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches <laughs> you know because that's what like people like maybe maybe doing in home so I kind of feel like our tone of voice really shifted and this isn't just like my my like champagne brands it's almost all of them like rather than being that like ringleader being like more of that like aspirational tone of voice we were really excited to sort of like explore almost like this like participatory like point of view so like we are alongside you like we're at home too right like mm -hmm. we can play a board game and like plus that up with champagne and that's like completely fine like you, you can have fun with that and you know you know I think like James we were talking yesterday and I was actually kind of like you know like it's almost like the sense of okayness on social media right now right like who you are is absolutely okay <laughs> You know, no matter what like context in which like you're you're framing that up. And so I think like for me and my brands, especially, it was sort of like figuring out ways to insert ourselves into people's lives, like with what they're already sort of like doing and going through. I mean, that's just as valuable as showing them like what like the, you know, the premier daytime event of the summer social season could look like, right? So yeah. there was so much value in that. And also I feel like we we did get to know our communities like way more. You know, like I can speak to Veth Clicquot in particular. We have like half a million followers on that brand. I feel like there's been more conversation happening on social media um, in the pandemic than like ever before. And, and, you know, hearing from our audiences, like those are insights that we can take back to the brand. Like we, mm -hmm. we tailor products, events, programs, like based on consumer sentiment, you know, and so those types of things are, are new and special. And I don't necessarily think we had that, you know, before COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that idea of, of you know, meeting people where they are. And, and uh, I think it was really refreshing to strip back some of the aspirational, mm -hmm. you know, it, it got, it, it got to be this like clout chasing thing that was happening in travel and events. And, and honestly, just with, brands as well. It's just like, do I have the, you know, do I have the new bag? And, and, you know, I think you see it reflected in fashion with like everyone putting logos everywhere. It's about look at me and look at how much money I have and look at how well I'm doing. And then this year kind of stripped all of that back a bit. And, and Alex, I'm interested to hear how, you know, how you were thinking about this for the event you just, you just launched and how you think about it for, for future ones, because, Again, I know like something we told our clients was like, you know, maybe when COVID broke out, it's like, you know, I would scale back on the giftings and things because I think, you know, there's already this sense that influencers are living in this like totally different world that is, is uh, not connected to most people's realities. Um, and a big part of that was, you know, they're traveling like millionaires, the amount that they travel and the cost of that travel would probably be like, you know, similar to somebody that, that is a one percenter. Um, and so wonder how y'all, uh, who also speak, you know, speak to a luxury audience, aspirational brand, how are you thinking about that in environment, um, as you, as you dive back into events? Yeah. I mean, we thought about this a lot with the Nemecolin event specifically, and what we decided was that it was meant to be very all-inclusive feeling and family-friendly. Um, and even that's for people that might not have families, but we made a point to invite people that did have children that could come to the event that could show like, listen, we're going to hit this different demographic. So I think it, it started from a casting level of who did we invite and what sort of audience do they entertain? You know, are these the people that just show lavish, lavish trips all the time? Or do we have some real people who use the air quotes, but do we have real folks that are in there and, and, and what audience do they speak to? So I've noticed, and, and this is just in thinking about all of our events this summer and what's coming up, there's a broader spectrum of people that we're entertaining so that we reach a different type of end result and a different audience. So for example, speaking really specifically at Nema Collin, mm -hmm. they have a restaurant on the property called La Trek that's a thousand dollar meal. And it's like the greatest, coolest experience in the world. We didn't do something there because we didn't want to show that. What we did instead, we had an amazing barbecue outside at the field club that was like skeet shooting and archery and we had this camp vibe and I have to say I think people act like actual camp not yeah, like yeah. campy fashion <laughs> um, 
And I think that people really enjoyed that. There was something that let people let their hair down. It felt more approachable. And that's, again, the kind of thing that I'm, that I encourage brands to really look at because I think they posted more because it didn't look so aspirational or off the charts mm -hmm. and it felt really good. It was all about being inclusive and that's including Luke Detella's gorgeous seventh month old <laughs> yes. to you know, like the Suarez sisters who are out making like incredible editorial, like ethereal dress moments by a pond. Like we were able to include all of those people and it felt very natural. Mm -hmm. And I also think our guests, nobody felt out of place and nobody was like, wait, I'm here, but like, why is he here? Yeah. Um, I think the only difference there was why am I here and why am I surrounded by a bunch of male models? But that's, <laughs> you know, I'm willing to tackle that problem. Right. You know, it's it's part of the job. You know, that's your, <laughs> yeah. your cross to bear. Yeah. Uh, no, and I think it's a great point just about the planning, right? Yeah. And that goes down to the people, their audiences. Is this message going to land? You know, are they comfortable doing what you're you're asking them to do? Um, one last one for for uh, for both of y'all, um, and I know we could just talk for another hour because um, I think we could all learn so much more. But just real quick, I think what are you, you know, in the way that you are thinking about doing your job? What do you think um, you will change? You know, what how how is your thinking about your job and about events and travel changed? Um, and what? you know, what remains the same or, or are you even more sure of than uh, since the pandemic? I'll start just because I'm off mute, sorry. Um, so I think for me, what's changed is I think about every single minute of the event and what people are doing and what they're engaging with and how they're gonna feel as opposed to just trying to pack a room of 400 people and like let them loose, let them have a drink and move on. Like, let's hope they take a picture in front of the step and repeat whatever. I think it becomes, and you know, I was never, I'm not like a throw something against the wall and see what six mm -hmm. kind of person, but there was a level of how do I get as many people as possible to this party? Mm -hmm. and, and then, and then whatever happens, if I had 400 people, yay, it was a success. Now it's how do I get the right people that are showing the right thing and what are they going to do at each minute of the event? And then how is that going to look to the world at large? So I think about things from like a narrower guest list, but a broader guest experience. Hmm. That's great. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense, Alex. And I think for, for us in particular, I mean, even before the pandemic, we were already thinking about the way that we engage with influencers in general as like more intimate experiences. So like, you know, we were kind of getting away from like the larger influencer trip model for like my wine and spirits brands and seeing a ton of value from like one person, you bring your plus one this weekend is for you. We'll tailor everything for you. And we were getting like richer stories that way. So actually Alex and like what you're talking about from, from your prior experience, like that's what we were really seeing from our, um, influencer engagers too. It's like when you give, um, our partners like that creative license and that kind of like first look or behind the scenes, like intimate, you know, access to our brands, you actually get like really richer stories, mm -hmm. you know? So that was something that we were already doing like in advance of the pandemic and something I definitely think we want to continue doing like going forward. Um, for us, it's also just kind of like a prioritization of like what, what, what needs to happen now versus like, what can we take the time to like wait and see to happen later? Right. Because like there is, I think for brands in particular, it's like, especially some of like wines and spirits brands, it's like we have our local team who reports into the brand team who then has like the global oversight. So it's like what feels right for us <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. um, so prioritization too has like never been more important and in based approaches. I feel like we don't feel like we have to do it all anymore. And I think people in general feel the same way, but I think for brands as well, it's like we can really take the time to do things the way that we want to do them and in the right way. That's fantastic. I love it. And I hope, you know, I hope to soon be in the VIP tent at the Polo Classic drinking champagne with both of you. Yes. Um, uh, thank you so much uh, for, for sharing. And, and Alex, I want to thank you for, for jumping into the deep end for all of us first and throwing the year's first big post COVID travel event. Uh, thanks for doing it. Thanks for doing it so well. Uh, I think a lot of people are probably feeling more confident having seen that happen and 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 go off so effectively. Well, you are most welcome. It was my pleasure. To <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both.